I've had the BMW 685s for a really long time. Those are my favorite speakers, just bar none. I find them to sound amazing. They have great mid-range, enough bass, a nice sweet treble to them. I like them so much that I've paired them with every amplifier that I've had in-house for review. I might not mention them in the reviews, but it's kind of my go-to speaker. I find them to be speakers that I don't necessarily need to replace with a newer, shinier model because I enjoy the sound so much. The last generation of those speakers were a little bit divisive. Like a friend of mine bought them and he immediately returned them because he just found the treble to be too forward and it hurt his ears. And that sentiment was echoed through a lot of reviews and a lot of people hearing those speakers. So when B&W went and released the S3 models, everyone was curious to see what the sound difference was. And so I naturally requested a pair, as I have for the last few years of, hey, can I get a pair of B&W speakers? And finally, I got a hold of a pair. Though, there was no 606s available. So I got a chance to review the 607, the smaller model from B&W. My name's Taps. This is 0102 Studio. And this is a review of the Baby 607 speaker. I always preferred bigger speakers over smaller speakers. I found that the six and a half inch driver on my BMW 685 was the sweet spot where vocals sounded really good. The mid range clarity was there. And when I got a larger driver like my old RX2 from Monitor Audio or the Silver 100s that I had in from Monitor Audio, Sounded great, big and expansive, but the mid-range was not as sweet sounding as it was from my 685s. And then smaller speakers, I just thought would just be a compromise across the board. And like every time that I assume something, I'm generally wrong. The 600 series is the entry-level speaker range from Bowers & Wilkins. The range now has four models, the floor standing 603 S3, the 606 S3 stand mount, the 607 S3 bookshelf, which is the subject of this review, and the HTM6 S3, the dedicated center channel for home theater. Each model is available in a choice of finishes, including oak, white, or black. My review sample came in all white. The new FS600 floor stand is available in silver or black to complete the range. It's a two-way vented box system. You get a decoupled one-inch double dome titanium tweeter, and you get a five-inch continuum cone for bass and mid-range duties. The new titanium dome tweeter adds refinement and resolution to these speakers. The new tweeter is a two-part construction with a very thin, light, but rigid 25 micron main dome braced by a second 30 micron titanium ring. This new design is housed in a significantly elongated tube loading system. The longer tube loading system reduces resonant frequency behind the dome and leads to a more open sound that is less impacted by the cabinet that houses it. It also includes the very latest, more open tweeter grille design taken from the recently introduced 800 series signature. All of this new technology in the tweeter is said to deliver a smoother, more refined sound without sacrificing resolution or detail. Bowers & Wilkins Continuum Cones continue to feature throughout the 600 range, but they've added in the more powerful Low Distortion 700 series motor assemblies. The cabinets have also received extensive improvements. The tweeter and main drive units are now mounted closer together, using intersecting trim rings to improve integration and stereo imaging. And finally, on the bottom of the speaker, they now have metal threaded inserts so the speakers can be more securely fixed to the top plate of the new stands. Around back, you'll also find upgraded speaker terminals. These are also speaker terminals that were recently introduced in their 700 speaker range. They have an improved layout and a cleaner signal path between your amplifier and your loudspeakers. Around back, you have the flow port. The speakers are just over 11 inches high, six and a half inches wide, and just under six and a quarter inches deep. They weigh 10.3 pounds. Frequency response is 52 hertz to 28 kilohertz. Sensitivity is 84 dB. Impedance is at eight ohms. The overall design of these speakers kicks the crap out of my 685s. Like, just they're altogether better built. They look better, they look cleaner, they look more seamless. 
The only thing I really miss is the front firing port on the 685s. I find that that just helps with pushing the speakers up closer to the walls, which is something that I like to do. I don't notice too much of a problem shoving these up against the wall. Like I'm sure bringing them out into the room does help a little bit, but I don't mind a bit of bass boom personally. Like it's just a sound that I enjoy more. And yeah, I have them about like six inches, eight inches away from the wall. Works just fine for me. I now have these speakers off the stands on my desktop on either side of my monitor as my daily driver monitor speakers. I have them connected to the Cambridge DAC Magic 200M via my trusty old NAD 326BEE. And that to me is a perfect setup for my desktop. They're actually a better speaker to live with versus my Yamaha HS8s, which are just giant monitor speakers. Now that my kids have drawn all over them, that they just don't have the same desk appeal anymore although they are great but i'm probably just gonna sell them and i don't know maybe maybe pick up these speakers or a future pair of 606s if i have a chance but these make perfect desktop speakers because i could tow them in quite a bit towards my listening position they don't dominate the desk they make a great dual purpose system like if you are in a smaller room like an office or a condo and you have a desk set up and you have speakers on your desk and those speakers are also not just your studio monitors, but also your condo living quarters, like home speakers. It's kind of perfect. There's no getting around it. These speakers are tiny. Like I was shocked at actually how small the box they were shipped in was. And then when I got them out, I was like, what? Where's the rest of the speaker? Like it, it's so small. But once I got them connected, I was treated to a sound that I just didn't expect. Like, it was a nice, big, full sound. And I'm so happy that I was wrong. Our current living room in our house is fairly large. It's about, like, 15 feet wide and open on the right side. It's about 9 feet deep. And these speakers were initially sent by themselves, and then the stands were sent later. But I set these up just on the sideboard, connected to the techniques. I'm going to say techniques forever. I don't know if it's called techniques, but it's techniques to me. And I've been saying techniques for 20 years now. Uh, but the SU, I'm going to get this name wrong, GU, it's their new streaming integrated amplifier that I'm going to be reviewing. I had it connected to that and the Alva TT V2 turntable from Cambridge Audio. When I normally get a speaker in, I'm just playing whatever I'm listening to at that time. So I'm really feeling Bungle's new releases, or I don't know if they're new, but they're new to me. There's a track called Enclosure that I'm just all in love with. Like, I wish I could make music like that. I played that track through these speakers, no sub connected, and I was floored. Like, it sounds so good. The highs are sweet. The mid-range is clear. The bass is nice and taut. It's not going low, but I'm not expecting it from these speakers. This bass that I heard was good it was good enough and if you have a room that's smaller than mine these speakers would be perfect if you have a small office or small condo these speakers would be a perfect addition to that condo like it's a it's a great speaker if you're looking for extra bass you just do what i did and i took the bmw 610 subwoofer that i've had for as long as i've had these speakers and i connected to those speakers it just fills in that bottom region, and I'm off to the races. It was the perfect setup. A few days later, I did receive the speaker stands for these speakers. It's a beautiful gray speaker stand, and once I got them all set up, you're supposed to fill the speaker stands with sand to eliminate any of those vibrations. I didn't do that because these are review units, and you know, I don't want to buy a bag of sand, fill it up, and then have to take it all out. It's going to get all over my house. Anyway, I didn't do that. but. Aesthetically, the speaker stands in gray paired with these speakers in white with gray speaker grills looks exceptional. And if you are looking at these speakers, I wholly recommend the stands. They get them at a great ear height. And having them on stands gets them off of the sideboard and mitigates any unwanted vibration on the sideboard and then through the turntable into the needle and back out through the speakers. All of the criticism that I heard about 
the last generation of BMW speakers of the treble hurting your ears or sounding grating and just sounding off. There's none of that in these speakers. If anything, once you get up really, really loud, then these speakers start to like strain and stress a little bit, but they are tiny speakers. So these aren't the speakers to like turn up exceptionally loud. Though, if these are the only speakers you have and you have a smaller room, you're not getting to like ear splitting levels anyway. I don't imagine like your loud is not the same loud as if you're listening in a giant cavernous room. Cause then you're, you know, you, you wouldn't put these speakers in a giant room. You'd put them in a smaller room and that's what they're made for. To that end, these speakers do an exceptional job. To really test out whether or not there was any hint of brightness at all, I ran Sabres of Paradise's Haunted Dance Hall through these speakers. You know, it's like a... It's all strings affair on this, this track. And playing this at fruity levels, like pretty loud, I didn't notice any grating at all to my ears. Like, I think... These are really, really well-made speakers. And whatever B&W did to these speakers, I imagine would be mirrored in the 606s just with a larger driver. So hopefully they send those over so I can hear them for myself. But like, yeah, they did whatever they did to these speakers. They did a great job. And yay. Also, after playing that, I switched it out to Digital Mystics version. I think it's uh, just called Haunted. And it's essentially the same track, but just all with bass. It's like one of those early dubstep tracks. Without a sub connected, they were able to play most of this track. Like, you know, there's always like a higher frequency of bass kind of like mixed into that song. So you could play it on a smaller system or listen on smaller headphones. And that definitely worked on these speakers. But once you connect that 610 sub, just it's all the feels and sounds amazing. And if you have a chance, whether or not you like that genre of music, play Haunted Dance Hall and then play Haunted side by side. And it's, uh, it's pretty spectacular. So yeah, these speakers are kind of awesome. And if you have a smaller space and you require smaller speakers to fill that space, but you don't want to sacrifice sound, take a look at these ones. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you for watching.